Right, it's 2010 and I'm just about to do a, a small um, recording of an event that took place in 2005 when we visited Suffolk on a holiday in Cambridgeshire in discovery of our ancestors, where we visited a pla many places. One was a place called Borough Green, where we located for the very first time our oak ancestors and others. So this is a recording done in 2005 on a handset tape recorder which has since been digitalised and saved on um, WMV. Right, here we go then. This is Sheila, 2005. Um, this is out under Mary Ambrook. Precious promise God has given to the weary part by on the way from earth to heaven I will guide thee with my mine eye. Hard to believe that we're near the end of our week. I think a week was enough. It was very intensive. You know, I was thinking when we come down again, it'd be nice to move nearer to Exon or Borough Green or Dullingham, I think. I quite like Dullingham. Let's try and find somewhere to stay nearer so we can do the walk. You know, we can do the local stuff because you can walk from one village to another along pathways. I'd like to do that. So, you know, that will be another adventure when we can find somewhere local. Well, it's Friday still, our last day. We're now going back where we started. We're in Borough Green. We've got some flowers, but we're just going to have another look round because it is a while back now and we've learnt more than we did in the beginning. <laughs> That's what we think, anyway. Um, and we're better at looking at the graves. So I've done some before. We're actually better than we were before, I think. I'm not sure. And probably not. We're probably no different. It's just a few reminders of things. We've got Christopher, Charles, um, elder son of Christopher, Rebecca Lacey. Departed 1861, age 28, just in case I didn't get that one. I just took my Brian, who died January the 2nd, 1881, age 87, just in case we didn't get her. This is Borough Green. Yeah. And Samuel Brown as well, 1869. So I found um, the top of an old stone propped up against a church. It's Mary Brown, who died January the 6th or 16th, 1893, <sighs> um, advanced in years, I didn't say how old she was, go across some old footstones, there's an ID, 1693, ED, 1729, and another LD, yeah, we've got an SP, 1757, sorry, you never know, it could have been a page for the P, We've got another little footstone of E.B. and J.B. Could be Elizabeth, could be James, could be a Brooks. We know that Stephen Oak and William Oaks were buried here. Well, Stephen Page. Like uh, Ancestors yeah. Saturday Saints have recorded them as being buried here, but so we know they're here, even if we can't, oh, even if we can't see the gravestones. Sometimes gravestones are used as stones entering churches, so it's worth looking at that. It's too late, anyway, it's 1893 of an EW footstone with a little cross on it. When we were missing some footstones, I came across an old jar, an old vase probably, that's got the initials 1852 on it, so it's quite old. This is my there's a John Harlow who died April. 1862, age 62, and his wife Mary, who died May the 27th, 1887, and their daughter Sarah, who died February the 21st, 1867. This is just to remind us, we've got the flowers on John Bridge and Ellen Oak's grave. We've got the details. Inside the church are two large statues, a man and a woman. One's called Elizabeth... D. Burr, B-U-R-G-H, died 1412, 
and jump somebody. Dode 13, something to four, no, born 13, something to 14, 20. John, somebody with her. Two big figures lying out. Church looks like it really needs some stonework done on it. Right, uh, Green, we've actually found an Edward Oak. Yeah. Grab that. Who <laughs> died, um, oh, November 20th, 1852, aged, I can't see the net, the age. It could be 56. Could be. This and then there's... Yeah, then they've got Mary Oak, formerly of this parish, who died at Newmarket, August the 31st, 1872, age 82. Oh, Henry, yeah. I think that's what it's worth. We've got, um, what is the name? It, this is open. No, I can't say, there's some really little tape. Mary Ann. We've also found the footstones, um, which is um, goes at the bottom of the grave, which uh, says Mary Ann Oak, died 1887. And Mary Oak died 1872 in Newmarket, and I've got both the information on them anyway. <laughs> These are our direct ancestors. So our first visit, we were very, it was starting to pour with rain, and we sort of did it. Edward died, we think it's November the 20th, 1852. Mary Ann died um, August the 3rd, 18. 87. And there's probably more writing down below. Paul was 88 when she died in 1887. Here, his beloved wife, Scott, sacred mem to the memory of Edward Oak, who died November the 20th, 1852. The Lord gave, there's a subscription, gave us and the Lord taketh away something or other. Um, well, I can't read all that. Um, the position of Edward's grave, who's my great, great, great grandfather, is not the tower end, it's um, the back of the church at the top end, but not the tower end. Facing the tower. Yeah, facing the tower, facing the tower. And he's next to, Edward is next to a bloke called Hardwood, um, who could have been his mate. He's next to John Harwood Wedge. And then there's another Harwood, another John Harwood Wedge. Who is, who is, so these were their neighbours. This Wedge family, I've actually made contact with living relatives of this Wedge family. Um, they were vicars. One was vicar in the village for many years and would have baptised some of my ancestors. So that was quite interesting because I had actually made details of that grave and was able to pass them on to the Wedge family, who I believe we married into it somewhere along the line as well. In fact, looking round this graveyard since, now it's 2010, I've been back several times, we have got many relatives in this graveyard, which I was unaware of at the time this original tape was made. Back to the cassette. And then there's... Um a Charlotte Elizabeth Ward, wife of Alfred Ward, who died in 1899. So they were living round here as well. In case, we've got John Lars Miller, who died 1891, aged 58, and George Miller, aged 63 when he died in 1901, and Sarah Ann, his wife, who died 1911. And we've got Ann Briggs, who died 1917, age 70, and the grave of Luke Briggs, who died 1897, age 64. There's a big um, plot here. Luke is right next to Mary Ann. Wife of Luke, yes she is. Mary Ann's the wife of Luke. <laughs> wife of Robert Lacey, died 1895, age 68. And Robert, there's a pleasure in here. Henry and Martha Ann Pledger, the 
friend of Charles Pledger, died in France in 1918, age 33, and also Frank, who died in 1882, age 8 months. We have now also found Stephen Oak, spelled with an E, and Mary, his wife. We're just cleaning up the stone now. That will be Edward's father and mother. Right, underneath the oak tree by the church, we have found our ancestors. It's like our mission has been successful, like they've kept us waiting for the last minute because we missed these graves when we first came here a week ago. It's as if they were saying, go on, we want you to look round the county. Go and look round and then, you know, you'll be coming back here. And that's just what we've done. We've gone and up roads, down roads, up little villages, in and out, backwards and fronts getting lost but finding ourselves. And on our final day here, we have located, it's made sense of all this trip. We've been busy cleaning up grave areas of the brooks. And then we've come here and we found Stephen Oak and there's others in the grave. I dug as much as I could out to get down to see what I could read. And, and Stephen's in there with Mary Brown. Edward's in front of him, and his, and I think it's his granddaughter's by the side of him. It's really quite an emotional time, just a, our final day. We're just going off to see Mark Oak now and put some flowers on his grave at Stunningham. Right, yeah, that was an emotional time, I remember well. And of course, I've been back there. We lived, then we moved up there a year later. We actually moved to um, Suffolk to live for six months, which wasn't long enough. It was just a tip of the iceberg. But we, I was able to gain so much information by having the local archives on my doorstep at Cambridge and Bury St. Edmunds and able to go out and visit all the churches and graveyards and the villages. A very enriching experience for Family Tree. And I've since been back again. We came back. We were only out there for six months. I came. I went back again in 2008 and, and, and camped over in Cambridge area because I wanted to use the archives, you know, to, you know, to reinforce my re re research, to validate it. Always got to be done, of course. And uh, while I was there, I I, I went off tr driving around all the villages I'd been visited all the graves and placed flowers on the, on the graves of our ancestors and and I intend to go back again and again and again and if I could I would go and stay there for another six months which isn't totally out of the question still one of my little missions to do although obviously my heart is in Somerset but I've still got in the back of my mind that I might get down there and do a bit more but of course there's London of course where I've also got a rich history and other areas of the country, so I can't be everywhere. But I have got a special place for Suffolk and Cambridgeshire now. So that was the end of the 2005 expedition. And of course I've done many more. This is, I have got many, many, 50 tapes like this plus uh, um, of our, the original hand tape recordings I did when visiting graveyards. That's over and out now from Sheila in 2010.